Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the Constitution, the news of the day, and a legal perspective into your home each month. Tonight, myself, James Barrett, with Mark Malachowski, will bring three new subjects to you. Mark, what's our first subject tonight? Well, we're going to start out with Kerry Kennedy. She's gotten a little uh, brush up with the law uh, back in February, or maybe before that, but she went to trial on uh, February 28th. Isn't Carrie Kennedy the daughter of Robert Kennedy? Yeah, she is the daughter of Robert Kennedy who was at, was assassinated in, yeah. in Los Angeles in the 1970s and the 1970s. In the early 70s, yeah, and that's, uh, that's an unfortunate tragedy because he was looking to be the potentially the next president mm -hmm. of the United States because of his popular backing. But let's go back to Carrie. Now, what did Carrie do? Well, Carrie um, allegedly was uh, driving under the influence. Uh, she was driving. There were some uh, reports that she was weaving. But she ended up uh, sideswiping a tractor trailer. Okay, well, was she, had she been drinking? Well, we don't know about the drinking, but apparently uh, she had was, had was under the influence of some kind of prescription medicine similar to Ambien. Okay, and well, we're, well, when we're talking about Ambien, we're obviously talking about a sleep, a sleep aid that people normally take at night before they go to bed so they can go to sleep. Why would she be driving uh, while she's on Ambien? Well, according to her testimony, um, she said that uh, she had a lot of pill bo bottles out on the counter, and I think she was ma taking a, something for another ailment, a thyroid uh, remedy or something like that. And she mistakenly grabbed the Ambien bottle and took a pill out of that bottle. Well, uh, from my understanding, Ambien is not a matter of you take one pill of Ambien. Uh, Ambien is, a is normally a low enough dosage that you would have to have taken more than one pill. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how many she claims she took, but she just claims she got the bottles mixed up. Well, I understand from the, from the report was that she actually was weaving in and out of traffic and then sideswiped a big rig trailer, right. and they found, the police found her asleep at the, at the scene of the accident. Yeah, allegedly she was slumped over the wheel uh, with the car, you know, crashed into the, the tractor trailer truck. Okay, so uh, didn't they give her a field sobriety test at the time? They found her to be unable to perform any of the simple tasks of a s field sobriety test? Well, you know, those field sobriety tests are voluntary, and I, I don't know if she participated. I, the, the report I read, I'm not sure if she, she, she went ahead and did those or not. But uh, uh, I think having crashed into the uh, uh, tractor trailer was probably probable cause for, for an arrest in a lot of ways. Yeah. Okay, so what, but did the officer at the scene make the finding that she was intoxicated? Well, they arrested her for that. I, I don't know. And the report I read, I was just reading about the trial and what, what her defense was in trial. Well, let's see. Uh, I, I did see something about this. What was her defense at trial? She said that she didn't know she had taken Ambien. She didn't know she was on Ambien, and she didn't think she had taken any kind of prescription. And she had a prescription for the Ambien, and she, ha she didn't knowingly take anything that would have put her under the influence. Well, uh, from my understanding, Ambien is a drug that creates a hypnotic state. And while you're on Ambien, a person can drive, eat, drink alcohol, and but still not know that they're even on Ambien or still not even know what they're doing. So is there an opportunity to believe that maybe she took it anyway and she just didn't know what she was doing? Well, the prosecution uh, called her a liar and said that... Uh, she should have noticed that she was under the influence of something and pulled over, you know, when she started feeling the effects. Uh, she said that uh, she doesn't really recollect all that. She just knows that she woke up and, you know, she'd hit the truck, but she didn't have an opportunity to notice she was under the effect and, and, and stop driving. So I understand in Michigan they actually have part of the law says you have to intentionally <clears throat> be taking an intoxicant or a prescription medication. So her defense of taking it unintentionally actually took her out of the violation of the crime. Is that what happened? Well, I think we were in New York. 
I think we're in New York. Okay, I thought we were in Michigan. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was in New York. Okay, but uh, wasn't wasn't her testimony at trial was she just didn't know what she was taking? She said she grabbed the wrong bottle. So she didn't intend to take Ambien, but that's what she ended up taking by error, by mistake. But she was, okay, well, Ambien, she's intoxicated. We know that intoxication is either you're intoxicated or you're not intoxicated. She was intoxicated. So what, what the jury found that even though she was totally intoxicated, even though she had a prescription for Ambien, even though she'd been taking Ambien off and on for 10 years, that somehow that morning she didn't take an Ambien? Well, is what, that what the jury was told? What they were told is that she didn't intentionally take the Ambien. She thought she was taking a thyroid pill. She took an Ambien or a, a drug like Ambien pill by mistake, and then she didn't realize it until she crashed into the truck. How far away from her, do you have any idea how far away from her home she was when she crashed? No, I, I don't know what the distance was. Okay, had she ever had a drunk driving before? I don't think so. I think this is her first. So this is her first offense. I think it's her first, yeah. And the first offense involving any kind of drug. Well, also, you know, it doesn't really matter what you're under the influence. A DUI is under the influence. It could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be anything. And what a lot of people don't understand is that you could be legally prescribed a drug by your doctor, but you may not be able to drive when you take that. Well, we understand that on all the pills, when you get bottles, uh, if you ever look at prescription pill bottles, you'll see that it says do not operate machinery or your car. Heavy equipment. Heavy equipment, and your doctors tell you don't be driving on it. So her excuse of I didn't know, is, it seems to be almost a little far flung if we were in the state of California. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think if you, if involuntary uh, intoxication, that could be a defense even for murder. Yeah, but an involuntary intoxication meant you had no, completely no concept that you were taking something. Well, that's what she claimed. She claimed yeah, that well, she didn't know she took Ambien. Well, I have a question. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't the, the jury be influenced by the Kennedy name to say that she, oh, she must be telling the truth? Well, the uh, prosecution brought that up, and they said, well, she's just trying to, you know, clear the good name of the Kennedys, and, you know, it, it's, it's because of that. Uh, but apparently that the jury didn't didn't go for that. I mean that that argument was made by the prosecution that uh, you know she shouldn't get away with it just because he's a candidate. Okay, I, I just noticed from my notes I have here, you know that uh, Carrie Kennedy used to be the wife of Andrew Cuomo, the the current the current governor of New York. So she's had she's had a very uh, uh, somewhat uh, public lifestyle. Right. And you would believe that somebody that has a public lifestyle that's had Ambien prescribed to her for over 10 years, knowing that she's potentially taking a drug, even though she says she didn't know, that there's, a, there's an opportunity here to believe that this potentially sh this was a jury nullification, so to speak, because of the Kennedy. <laughs> so what you're saying is that you think maybe the prosecution went after her because she was a candidate? I believe both. I believe under <coughs> two, two theories. Excuse I believe me. that the prosecution believed that they went after her because she's a Kennedy because they're trying to make a, a point. But I also believe the jury could have easily decided that she's not guilty because she was a Kennedy because they believed her. Well, you went after to understand that, yeah, I'm sure there's things on both sides. On one side, if you're a prosecutor, and you convict a Kennedy, I think that's a good way of making yourself a reputation. So I, you may want to go after a Kennedy where you wouldn't bother with someone else. Uh, and on the flip side, I think there is a certain amount of, you know, the, the Kennedys were kind of thought of as royalty, and they may have gotten, you know, some, some, uh, some leeway, some prestige where, you know, a regular person wouldn't have. Sure, the jury might have given them some sympathy. Yeah, I also noticed that uh, she had no memory of driving at all that morning. And that uh, there's, because she's never had any other event in her life that would tie to the use of the Ambien, that in reality, she, she almost got the benefit of the doubt of the jury, I believe. Well, I think that one of the indicators of Ambien is you might forget what happened. Yeah, and if you forget what happened and you forget that you took the Ambien or you, for, or you thought you were taking something else, Obviously, she had the opportunity to, to use that defense, 
and the jury bl believed her. Yeah, I've worked on an Ambien case before, and the Ambien is, I, and also I think people think because, yeah, they take it before they go to bed, and it's not that strong of a drug, really. I think people maybe don't realize, you know, how, how, how much it affects them, too. Okay, well, listen, I think uh, that's enough on the Ambien issue because I will tell you, the Ambien is a controversial drug. A lot of people have had problems with it. Some people have sued over it. But I think it's time for us to move on.